Retro Radio, because everything new sucks, unless it sounds like old. Hey lady, I've been thinking of ya. You are my mind, hey baby. I've been missing your touch. You're listening to Please Send Dick Pics. And I just got my AOL CD in the mail, and... You've got dicks. Oh my goodness, it works! Wowie! to remind you of me when I'm not there. Gonna send you pictures of my penis. Gonna send you my dick pics. Pictures of my penis. Gonna send you my dick pics. I noticed that you didn't reply Why? I don't know I'm just curious Because some time has gone by Come on, strong girl <laughs> I'm sorry I think it's delayed, I'm sorry uh, Let's see, three You count and I'll do it Three, two, one. Oh fuck That's, that, that's close that's close. All right. <laughs> okay, well, whatever. I'll send you this recording, and it's going to fail anyway. So, what's up, everyone? Hey, everybody. I'm April. And them, Angie. And you're listening to... Please send, send dick pics. pics. What are you doing, yeah. April? I know we're, like, far away, but this is, like, getting too delayed. Anyway, I'm sorry. pretty awesome. Okay, so guys, just so you know, I mean, like, so you can keep up with the conversation. Uh, April and I are trying this remote thing because, as you all know, April wants to get the fuck out of Arizona. And we yeah. need to figure out uh, how to do this remote so we can keep doing this podcast. Yeah, so Yay. we're doing this remotely. I'm hanging out with my dog, Tesla today um so and, that's cool um and i'm trying so to Angie, polish my boots because they're a little dirty okay <laughs> she's polishing her boots when i um like we're doing like facetime right now and she's yes. polishing her boots and we both have filters on our faces so i look like a disco bear right now and with, i like, look like a grunge like against a record made by a six-year-old she looks like a grunge Nirvana meets Where the Wild Things Are, and it's like she's an album cover right now. <laughs> Pretty much. Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> so what's um, new with everyone? Well, I, I'll talk about some good things uh, that happened this week. I was filming in a mansion in the middle of the desert. Oh, nice. And... Were you filming porn? Yeah, filming a porn. I'm kidding, yeah. April. <laughs> it's okay it's like it's um, like come on don't don't take it personal um, yeah. oh i'm totally i'm gonna take this so personal uh, i mean but it's like when you see I a mansion porn. in the valley that's what i'm gonna think <laughs> yeah you're right it sounds really like or i'm just dying or something anyway um, yeah what else I was is filming with my improv with? friend she was fun I, i'm i'm really I'm, i play this really mean badass like teacher from like a Judy Bloom or Raw Doll or Beverly Cleary book. Oh. Um, but I hang out with my improv friend and she's so talented and I just we just like do impressions and like characters off of each other. It's so much fun. Oh cool. Um what did you do this week? Well I worked and I've been trying to deal with my uh with some heartbreak. It's okay. I mean just so you all know the whole thing that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago about my crush and I, that didn't work out, but it's okay. I'm just a little worried that a lot of people already know, but you know what? There's like, I mean, I'm trying to cope. I'm trying to own to the shit that happened. And I mean, like, hopefully, like, April and a lot of other people have said, you know what? I'll just have to, like, be clear with my truth and, you know, move on, move forward. But I've been trying to delve, I mean, dig into work and... I also, like, I cope with all my stress. I went to Ikea, and I spent a lot of cra- a lot of cr- money. <laughs> you almost maxed out your credit card, right? Well, my credit card is not really maxed out. And then I, I, okay. it turns out that I had to go back because I grabbed the wrong item at Ikea. 
Oh no. Yeah, my life is very boring, guys. You all, I all I want to, all I will talk about is IKEA, and like trying to make my living space less stressful, and you know That's get good. more efficient and more productive. So that would be good, I guess. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's good. Your place is amazing. No, oh, uh, yeah, but it's been a little, you know, it's been a little bit neglected lately. So I had to give it some love. You know, I had to change the table because I have a work, I have a table that was going to be my dining room table, but it's actually a, a workstation table. But I really don't use the dining room. And yeah. the chairs that I have for the dining room don't even match. So I got a dining room, I got a drop leaf table that will match with the with my dining room furniture. And That's good. then we will, uh, uh, how can I explain it? Yeah, and I already got a vanity so I can put all my makeup and not, it looks really cool. Like it was a cool thing that I bought. So. Well, th speaking of neglect, I was at a coffee shop this week. Okay, so what happened at the coffee shop? I hung out with some comedy friends who were like, we were going over some jokes. I was helping them with their jokes. And uh -huh. then like, we were there for an hour and a half or something. And I'd been to this coffee shop before and I talked to the owners and I bought like three drinks there in like, in a three hour period one time when I was there with my comedy friends. But this time around, they left. I was going to just use the bathroom and I kind of set my stuff down on the table. I used the bathroom instead of dragging like my backpack in there and stuff with my laptop. Uh -huh. And um, I walk out and I was just kind of on the internet um, at this coffee shop. So I was like, maybe I should like do some work here, you know? And right as I was about to do something, one of the baristas walked over. They're like, how are you? And I'm like, I'm good. And they're like, um, okay, cool. Are you going to buy anything? And I'm like, uh, I might. I'm not sure yet. And they're like, well, okay, you need to, or you need to get out. That's fucking and I'm bullshit. like, oh, yeah, they said that. And I just immediately, I'm like, cool. And then I got on their Facebook page and I wrote it like a one star review immediately. Uh, and then <laughs> that's the way we saw and, things in the next, in the 21st century. Yelp I'm like, Facebook. these guys I thought were cool. Yeah, yeah. How do we get, like, the message across? And then, like, as I was leaving, after the, I wrote the review on my laptop and I was packing up, this girl behind me, she's like, she's like, ah, hey. And I'm like, hey. And she's like, my name's, her name is, uh, like, Erica or something. And she's like, ah. she did a lot of this, like, ah, just, you know, like, uh, um, they didn't like mean it that way. I saw how they acted towards you and do you want me to buy you a coffee? Oh, she did, like, did this like, <laughs> she, her, her uh, demeanor was like definitely a character I'd want to like replicate on stage, but she's just, like, <sighs> just a lot of not talking and her just going, <sighs> you know. I mean, but it was kind of nice. Like she said, it was very nice. you know why yeah. that was not cool what the barista did. Yeah. But she was very nice. Maybe she saw me writing the review. Like maybe her angle in this room. Oh, was see me was texting. it the same girl that the told the one that told you to buy that she was gonna buy you some coffee? That's the girl. Yeah, she doesn't work there or anything. But she just was like, "Hey, they're actually really nice." I'm like, "I know the owners." Basically, like I had a long conversation with them, and she's like, oh, "Okay." And I'm like, "I don't. I didn't really feel like drinking coffee that day. That's why I didn't get any." I mean, that's kind of. Um, yeah, that's kind of bullshit. Like. I mean, I understand there's our businesses and they want to uh, appeal to a certain demographic and they don't want, you know, they don't want to scare away people. But still, it's like, didn't she see you before with other people? Like, she didn't have to tell you. I was, you I was outside. But it was a guy barista, but yeah, um, the guy who, who told me to get out was a guy. Oh, my um, God. I was outside with my comedy friends. Well, he I've was a jerk. before. So... Um, he was a jerk. It then. Was if he really was a guy weird. who told you that. I mean, he was rude. I must have looked like a hobo to him or something. Um, Still, I was like I mean, Stevie Nicks. There's a lot of kids nowadays know. that dress like hobos. Yeah, I don't know what it was. I think they're trying to like maybe they're not making a lot of money. I totally get it, but it's just like oh, like it's just like it's a front. It's like oh, want to start a fight, and then you're just like no, and you leave. You know, it's like yeah, like they sort of they sound like they want to leave. start a confrontation. Yeah, I don't know if I'll be back. It's is I don't know if I should say the place, but it looks like 
uh, it looks like a hobbit. Hobbits live there, and it's in downtown Phoenix. If anyone knows what I'm talking about. What um, is this place, Jobot? So, what? Was it Jobot? Jobot Coffee? No, it was Hobnobs. Oh, I hate that place. That place oh, is really? Bullshit. Well, it's so cute, I mean, though. I mean, oh. it's a cute place, but it's like, oh, my God, people are so fucking bullshit there. Yeah, sometimes okay. the there is kind of asshole-ish, which sucks, but, I mean, it is what it is, so. Yeah. Anyway, so um, what else we're going to move on? We've been off the air for two weeks, so we have a lot um, to Actually, about. just one, just one week. Like one week. Last week, you weren't even sick, right? Huh? You weren't even sick, and we decided not to do it. <laughs> I was, I was emotionally hurt. Oh, okay. Yeah. Been there. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, okay. I still am, but now I'm physically sick, so that makes things a lot worse. <laughs> I probably made you sick. Um. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. Like you know. Anyway. So here's like the first topic. Like we're gonna go into news, guys. The news shootings. right now. Um, the shooting. So there's a hot topic. Um, so there's like several companies that are dropping the NRA because of the school shooting thing and the kids like standing up for themselves. Yay, kids! I can't believe it takes kids to do that, but you know. I oh, know. Um, I can't believe uh, so all these companies who give discounts to the NRA for like their people. They're dropping them. Like, there's some airlines dropping them. Uh, who else? There's a bunch of companies just, like, saying, hey, we don't, like, Wyndham. I, I guess a lot of companies dropped them years ago. But um, there is MetLife, Semantic, Best Western, Alamo, uh, Enterprise, Hertz, Budget. A lot of car rental places, I guess. Um, Norton, Shit, they don't the even give veterans discounts. And they give fucking NRA discounts? I don't joke. get it. Like, Okay, yeah, veterans' discounts are good because you did something, most likely, you know, to, like, give back to the country. But Ugh. NRA, it's like, oh, you shot a tin can in your backyard off a fence one time, and then you, like, took <laughs> a nap and had a beer, and then you want it, like, 80% off your cell phone bill? No. Pretty much. I like, you got to be That's kidding what it me. seems like. I don't get it. Yeah. Okay, I don't I get the discount thing. looks good. I'm done with my boots for now. Oh, your boots look great. Oh, I'll try. So grungy. Yeah. Even though your fil your little Facebook filter is black and white, I can see you in black and white <laughs> with a little crown. Oh, you look like Biggie. You look like Biggie with the crown appearing on your head. Or like... Like fucking or like Luke Daddy Cage. or something. Um, let's see what else. Oh, did you hear about the gay Olympic figure skater? Uh, oh, yeah, he name, won the gold, right? I'm not sure. I don't. I've seen him on Ellen, and I forgot his name. But he's refusing to meet with Mike Pence. Mike Pence was like, "Hey, I want to meet up with you." Fuck no. And he's like, "No." He's like, "No, Mike Pence. You're gonna try to convert me with your gay conversion therapy like, to straight. No, dude, I'm no. not gonna meet with you." Exactly. Like, fuck no, Mike Pence. You're an asshole. You put like a bunch of you do a bunch of stuff against the na the gay people. So no. Yeah, it's weird how you can say something and then be like, oh, I still want to meet with you. Like, like I hate dogs. And then I'm like, oh, I'll watch your dog while you're out of town. Like, it's kind of like that. Yeah, like, it's no, like you I mean, stuff. you're going to fucking murder my dog. Yeah, it's very confusing. Like, people don't realize what they say can backfire, yeah. which... Because people are fucking stupid. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and then Twitter deleted a bunch of Russian bots off of Twitter, its own company. And, um... I guess a lot of conservative followers of Trump are Our like, man. oh my gosh, I lost like a thousand followers today. And they think it's like the liberals doing it. I mean, Oh yeah, I, I because the liberals are doing everything. Oh shit. <laughs> they probably think the liberals run Twitter, which they might. It might be a mixture of conservative I'm pretty sure. and liberal, but... Yeah. I guess a lot of Russian Twitter accounts were following conservatives and they're not real. They're like fake accounts. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, of it sucks to lose followers, though. It's, it does suck, right? It does hurt you a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah, but they're fake followers. So they don't matter. Yeah, it's true. Why would you want to feel so empty? I know. Um, I don't know. Oh, and then, oh, and then there's a woman who suffered. Uh, this is the funniest thing. I don't know if it's so funny, but as more like this can happen. A girl in like Brazil, 23 years old, she was doing abs at the gym. And then, um, 
And she did so many abs that she paralyzed herself. Wow. Wow, she might Yeah, have actually, yeah. She, uh, she's very fit. Actually, it looks like she fell off the ab machine. That's what happened. Oh, um, okay. She's Louise. And yeah. it shows her, like, in a neck cast. All right. So what else... Well... What else we have a part of... Okay, hold on. What else we, we have? We have the dick of the week. I'll let you talk about that. Dick oh, of the, the week. dick of the week, of course. Go you ahead, know, take it. It's actually, it's actually not one dick. It's going to be four dicks. <laughs> and the dick of the week are this armed, co -op, armed, uh, armed police officers that were hiding while the Parkland school incident was taking place. Like, you know, that's what bothers me about weapons. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, don't take our weapons. I mean, you never know when a good guy with a gun will stop a bad guy with a gun. There were four good, good guys guy. with guns, and they were hiding while kids were... Uh, doing their part as human shields, right, running away. They were in danger. And these guys, they are four cowards. It's they're not four like, cops, they're four cowards. They're, I mean, it's, I know it's terrible, but it's, I mean, there were four people that are complicit in the situation. They might not be directly complicit because they were not working with the active shooter, but they were guilty. They're guilty as well for, you know, dealing with that. I mean, not doing their job. It sounds like an active shooter if they're... That sounds like an active shooter, right? They were in an active shooter situation. Yes, and they were hiding. Yeah. So, and then there's that teacher who used himself as a human shield. Jeez. So, we shouldn't arm teachers with guns, right? No, no. I don't want to give a gun to Mr. Thomas that is the math teacher is getting the, uh, is in the middle of a divorce and he's <laughs> just holding on the last threads of his sanity because he has a class that is overcrowded. He has probably 40 kids in his class and 25 are very rude and disrespectful to him. You want to give a gun to that guy? <laughs> no. Like... Also, I'm like, saying, yeah. I'm going to tell you, like, uh, in Puerto Rico, I'm from Puerto, where I'm from, in Puerto Rico, I mean, like, I always tell everybody, because I have to make it obvious, uh, in Puerto Rico, we, uh, I mean, our gun laws are very strict, yes, we have one of the highest crime rates per, uh, per uh, capita, I believe, it's like, I mean, there was a time in which it reached almost a thousand murders, now they're like, 600 in 2007 it was like 640 something murders i mean but it's like all illegal weapons anyway so there's i mean it's very hard i have friends that have guns in puerto rico but it's very hard to go through that i wanted to take shooting lessons when i was uh -huh. that and this was back in 2004 so that was about like 14 years ago i wanted to take shooting lessons and I believe it was like, oh, there was a lot of red tape because I had to pay like hundreds of dollars for the permit. And the permit, oh my God. And the permit involves a psychological evaluation from the police that can take weeks, maybe it can take months. It also involves buying the gun and the gun was like $500. That's like an average for a gun. Uh, plus I had to pay the membership for the shooting range, which is probably like in the, it's a little more than, it is like about, I think it was about $25 at the time. I don't remember, but this was, these were prices like 14 years ago. So it's a lot. I'm pretty sure it's higher now. So anyway, they're very strict. They have been, a vi I saw a video, I believe it was in 2016 or last year, of a teacher that was losing his patience with his students because in Puerto Rico, students uh -huh. are rowdy as fuck. And, I mean, the teacher did not get, like, 
you know, aggressive, like physically aggressive. He didn't, but the kids were very belligerent. I'm going to find that video so I can post it. The students, some of the students were very belligerent and he was like pretty much insulting them. He said something about like, he wish he could like, he could, you know, smack one of the kids' head with this, with the book. With a book. And like, oh my gosh. and it's terrible. I mean, I don't want to give a gun to that guy. You know, a guy that is already losing. I mean, yes, it's true. Like, teachers get a lot of psychological evaluations before they get in the field. But I don't think that after that, like, you know, the government cares about what they're doing, like how they're doing. I mean, teachers are very underpaid. I think they get probably like about 40000 per year. 40000 per year. And that's like... Not even, ca I mean, that's pretty like, I mean, if they get something in the, uh, maybe, I mean, they don't get a lot. I mean, they, it's true. They have like, okay, they have, they have vacations, but their vacations are not being paid. Like on vacations, they have to make ends meet. I have also teachers had, um, like some teachers in Puerto Rico, particularly because private schools don't have benefits, some teachers have to go and pick up a weekend job or like a, a, a night and weekend job because they, yeah. have, they have all this work too. They have to do, I mean, uh, the teacher's day does not end at three or four o'clock like my day ends. They have to take homework. They have to take these assignments. They have to sit down. They have to, uh, you know, review all these assignments that they give to the kids and then they have to deal with a lot of belligerent teachers i mean like a lot of belligerent parents because if the kid gets a d because little tommy is being an obnoxious ass that stands up in class doesn't do his homework and then he gets a d and we're putting it nicely getting a d then his mom tommy's mom is gonna go to the classroom and she's gonna confront the teacher about why my kid gets a D. I have friends that have that had that experience. I had a friend who went like a parent took my friend to the court because they had an argument because they're I mean the parents I mean the stu I mean the student was not doing its homework and I mean the parent went to find my friend. It's just really a really sad situation for teachers. And it's like, and let's be realistic, April. Sorry about interrupting. Let's be realistic. I mean, they don't, the government doesn't give them money for pencils or paper. Where are they going right. to get money? Money for guns. Where are they going to get money for guns? And training. So my Ooh. thing, like, Angie, about this would be the training part. Like, the cops are trained, and... The cops can't even handle it. I can't imagine exactly. training a teacher for like 10 minutes and then being like, you're all set. There's even a guy who wrote an article. He's a teacher now, but I'm ex-Marine. He's probably like, I'd say 40s, 50s now, um, I'm guessing. But he wrote for the New York Times, wrote an editorial, you know? Uh -huh. And he wrote, um, he wrote that he's a Marine and he doesn't even want to deal with guns in school. Because also when you go to school, you don't think you need to be packing heat. And like, exactly. it's a Mexican standoff every time you go to school. Like, oh, someone might shoot me here today. Like, you just don't think like that. You want it to be a safe environment to learn you and want, be yourself you, yeah, and like you want explore who you are. You want an environment that is nurturing, that is safe. You know, a lot of kids yeah. deal with a lot of like shit. Like a second like, home or something. My friend, my friend told me, like my friend, oh, my friend had an argument. Like I had a friend who... Uh, Oh my God, when she was in the middle of a divorce, her husband said something about her students. I mean, her now ex-husband. And she said, don't you dare talk to my about my kids like that. There are kids. You want to know something, April? There's kids out there that their parents are selling them after school. Like, the kids go to school because they feel safe. They're in that classroom. In that they're building. hookers? Like hookers? Yes, like their parents sell them. Yes. Oh. There are kids no. that because their parents are drugged up, they have to get home and prepare food for themselves and for their little brothers and sisters. It's just very, very sad. And I'm like getting worked up and I'm sick. It's just enraging. I mean, don't tell me that you're going to get guns for these teachers. 
Well, well, let's move on, then. I know it's really sickening. It's like... I have a... I can imagine, like, the teacher that I was telling you from Puerto Rico that lost it with his kids and went on, like, a rant with them. I can imagine that a guy would have gone, like, shooting them and then shooting himself. A total... And it will be a mediatic circus and a complete nightmare. It's going to be... So the, we got to... It's going to be the worst nightmare for the public subject, relations. Then. Yeah. Let's move on from the subject, then. We've mm. been spending a lot of time on it. I'm getting too touchy, um, yes. So... There's some other things we need to cover. Um, that's definitely an ongoing topic that is all over Twitter. Um, so here's a hero of the week. Um, some people disagree, but I think the hero of the week was um, the U.S. Women's Olympic Freestyle Skier Elizabeth Sweeney. Uh, she sucks at skiing. She's better than me because I ski, but, like, she can do the half pipe. But she can't do, like, the jump. She can get a little bit of air. But she basically tried to join, I think, the U.S. women's team. She didn't qualify, so she just did all the qualifications for, like, two years. She never fell at any of the competitions, and she qualified for the Hungarian team. And she just wanted to, um, you know, be on the, in the Olympics. So, like, there's a video of her uh, doing the halfpipe, uh, free sc- freestyle skiing, and she does, like I said, really good. She does, she places like, I don't know, 30 or 50 or whatever it is, but um, some people are mad at it. I think it's an, a good accomplishment. As a comedian, uh, we barely get by. We're always like copying people or copying a style or inspired by a style or we steal people's voices because we're impressionists. So like, I'm so proud of her. Like she's, she... She's stronger than I am because, like I said, she didn't even fall. Like She's the halfpipe is where you, you go into it. Like she does really good. She does better than I could. I'm just amazed that she can even stay on a half half pipe. And when you go up, you know, when you go up the side of the half pipe, she didn't even fall. And I'm just like, I can't even do that. Probably, I don't even know. Like I'm just so proud of her. Um, but I think the people who like didn't qualify, who are sitting at home, they're like the freestyle skiers. I think they're not happy about it. But I'm like, hey, if you were good, you'd be there, you know? Um, <laughs> of course. And I think the Olympic Committee is going to make it harder for people to do this. So, like, next time, people like Elizabeth probably won't be able to do it. They're going to make it, like, stricter. But like they're not going to so let her if, compete for another team? Yeah, they're going to make it stricter on that end, I think. No. Um, but, like, but if, if, if you have a funny bone, bone or, of, or any of any kind, kind it's great. great. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's do Celebrity like Dick of the Week. Oh, I don't have one. I, I have mine. I can go first if okay, you want. Okay, let's talk about That's your Celebrity cool. Dick of the Week. Okay, so mine is a blonde guy. Um, he had a feud with John Lovitz. Uh, his former news radio co-star. Um, they got into like a physical conversation at the Laugh Factory in Los Angeles in like oh, 2007. Oh, yikes. Um, <laughs> he's, he's probably really into cocaine. I know he's been in and out of rehab. Oh, he's I'm my kind sure of person. <laughs> he's your kind of person? Nice, okay. I mean, I don't do cocaine. Is that what you said? He's your but... kind of person? I don't do cocaine. But you want a guy but... who does? <laughs> no, I mean, but he, he, he I mean... I can I can I can imagine that I snore mountains of cocaine and I'm fine with that. Um, he's done a lot of voiceover work, a ton of like film. Well, not a ton, but like I would say, let's see how many. Yeah, a lot of films. Oh shit, yeah, well, a lot of films. This um, dick? He's kind of a hooligan. He's kind of like a Tom Green, but he's blonde. You know? Oh wow. Probably less who's, organized. Uh, I did like the show News Radio with Dave Foley. I did like that show. I had Joe Rogan in it too. Um, let's see. He has struggled with, uh, alcohol and drugs. Okay. Um, he was in Dancing with the Stars, which I think he rejected them at first, but then eventually he was on there. Oh my God. Uh, what else this? is interesting? I'm curious. Tell us, April. Tell um, us. Oh, his first voiceover was an advertisement for the original Sonic the Hedgehog game in 1991. Oh my uh, God. so this guy, again, he's a hooligan. He probably paints the town everywhere he goes, but it's Andy Dick. Oh, nice. Dang. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Yeah. No, I was go- I was watching a couple movies, and he was in a movie that uh, he did, like, a cameo appearance in the movie Loser. 
He was like mm-hmm. a financial aid advisor, and he was uh, oh my god. He's I mean he's kind of he's you know he's fun to watch at least. Um, yeah, he was cool. He was cool. He reminds me of Dana. He reminded me of Dana Carvey in that scene specifically, for oh, some wow. reason. But I don't know why. Yeah, he's kind of Dana Carvey, Tom Greenish, huh? Like, uh, but a little oh, wow. wilder. Yeah, I feel like. No, see him. Tom Green's pretty episode. wild. Anyway, so. Um, well, let's go to the uh, topic, uh, the personal topic. So, we were discussing because of what happened with like in Angie's life this week. Yeah, we're not talking uh, about that per se. We're not gonna, we're not gonna talk. We're not gonna go into detail, but. Uh, we were talking about it came we came up with a good or she came up with a good topic um what could if we could turn back time what time would we go back to and relive because of what we know now and why so I probably would go, go back to like sometime in 1978 to prevent my parents from being born I mean to prevent my parents from me so I'm not born <laughs> so I probably oh. will be born somewhere else and not dealing with this shit who knows? Maybe I'll have normal parents and I will have like a well-rounded childhood and I'll be a confident person. Not this fucking mess I am. But I don't know. Well, I feel like that sometimes, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll like go back to like 1990-something when I was starting to, I mean, when I was starting to feel the pain of teenagehood. I don't know. Like something. Or 2001, so I could have joined the Air Force then and not wait five years to join the Air Force. What about you, April? What think, do you think? Uh, if I could go back, I'm thinking there's always, like, a time. I feel, I feel like things are, like, everything that happens just makes you, like, who you are, of course. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, sounding think cheesy that's the thing about also. that. But... Like, we have all these experiences, and what we know now is not, I mean, is what... Uh, you know, make us whoever we are, like if we're strong, or we, uh, there's a lot of things, but I don't know, it's like, I would rather to have another life, sometimes. Sometimes I want to go back to, like, high school, because, like, of what I know now, like, I would, if I can go back to high school, I wouldn't dye my hair blonde, I mean, I was adorable, but, like, I wouldn't dye my hair blonde and, like, try to be the popular with the popular girls like I was kind of in between I was kind of like between like these super Mormon girls I'd hang out with them and I'd hang out with like semi-popular people I was never with any group but I would definitely be more like silly I guess instead of trying to look like Britney Spears and like tan and blonde and like platform sandals and stuff oh. um, I would just like probably go into stand-up sooner I would go into like I did improv in 2004, but I just was not confident. How you guys see me now, I was, like, not confident in improv. And, like, when I was 19 in 2004, um, like, I've come a long way. I was so scared of improv. But I would say I'd get into comedy sooner. And, yeah, I kind of wish that all the time. That's basically it. Like, if I could just get into comedy sooner and not work a day job and just, like, my day job is just comedy, you know? I want to be a writer. Like, I just want to... Just do writing. I don't care if I get out of this house. Like, I don't care if I... <laughs> I'm like, that's my dream job, being a writer. Just sit down and just tie, tie. What tie. kind of writer? What kind of writer, girl? I don't know, like a uh, fiction writer, romance writer. I mean, Ooh, I can like do all Danielle these things Steele? in my day job, but... You know. You'd be a yeah, regular right old Danielle Steele? No, I will be funnier. I will be like Rachel Gibson. Oh, <laughs> oh, what's her name? Sorry, say it again. Rachel Gibson. She writes like those oh. paperback novels. I mean, they're good, but I don't know exactly what she does. No, but um, oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, but I mean, you still have to get out of the house so you can like learn experiences and whatnot. So it's it's weird. It's one of those things that you're like, oh, what. What what do I do? Like what is I mean, should I should I stay or should I go? Like stuff like that. You know, yeah. if I could go, I back, could go back, back in time, time also, also, I had saved up ten thousand dollars when I was like twenty three years old. If I knew I wanted to move to LA or New York or you something. You would have taken that money and gone. I would. What? You would have taken the money and go. 
Yeah, well, it turns out I don't need any money to move. I thought I did, but... Well, you need to um, find a place. You need to stay somewhere. You no, I'm saying have... you don't need as much money as you think. Like, it makes it easier, but, like, you don't need to, like, let money stop you from doing things. Because um, money just shows up, Angie, as you... Oh, because I, I... Did I tell you I woke up uh, to an email that said... Um, there's somebody who just gave me like a thousand dollars. Like, oh, I woke up yeah, email last from week. Like, yeah, that was nice. So, I don't know. Money's not an issue. I was also kind of like, for me, it is wishing. An issue. I mean, you can make it an issue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, it's really just like energy. Like, I was just being positive about money for like five days and then it just shows up. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Um, and my body was like, you need to like stop working April and just like take a chill pill. And I'm like, what? How dare you? Like my body was telling me that. I'm like, how dare you talk to me that way? And then I did it and then money showed up. So I'm like, okay, I guess this is good. Um, but yeah, I guess money's energy. It's not like a be all end all. It's not like a goal. Does that make sense? Like maybe possessions are a goal, but not like. It is a goal. Money's like. Money is like the worst goal. It makes you sad. I know. Like, you it never makes have me enough. sad because I have, have money to buy all these and things, and but I don't have a lot of things that I want. Like, I don't have a companion. I don't have, I mean, I have friends, but it's like nobody, I You can't I, buy that, right? Yeah. I yeah. But I can buy information. Well, you can buy decorations and then make them your boyfriend. And information on people I want. I mean, on the people. I can buy information. That's like getting dark, so let's You make... can buy a background check? Oh, yeah, it's like thirty five eighty one is what they cost. Oh, you know the price. Oh, my God, Andy. Well, the, the, screen, <laughs> the, the screenings that I do are like $25 oh. or so. Oh, you work in this industry. Like you work no. in the apartment industry where they need that. I'm sorry. I was like, how do you yes. Oh, my God. I was <laughs> like, I can fucking buy it. Oh, my stuff. gosh. Yeah, I know the price on that. If you want to get, like, an information or, uh, like, a name of somebody because I remember I had one time I was having this issue with this guy like this guy was like stalking me kind of and I remembered uh-huh. him from like no it was not fun he was an asshole <laughs> no he 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 started talking to me and then like he ghosted me and then he uh, th- he appeared again and he tried to pull the same bullshit and I know his name was Will but I couldn't remember his last name so I looked up his phone and on this website that I could pay, like, I think it was like $1.99 for the number. Like, I typed up the number and I could pay $1.99 to get, like, a lot of information. And he gave me the last name. He gave me the addresses he has lived. It was crazy. Wow, I was like, that's Whoa. a lot of information. Does that have their blood type, too? Huh? Blood type as well? No, 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 no. Like, he just gave me basic information. All I needed was the name of the guy. Oh, my God. I didn't know that. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, well, before we go, I yeah. want to mention one thing. If, if you've listened to the podcast this far, I'm so proud of you. High five. Yay. That's high five. Yay. Um, and uh, I want to mention I am so, like, I'm a total believer, like I said, in the money thing where, like, if you have good energy, like, money shows up because it always does in my life anyway. Um, I, I ran into the guy at Devil's Advocate, this comedy comedian who's, like, traveling with his girlfriend in an RV, and he saw my set, and I mentioned... It's his wife, like, actually. I always, like, end my set with, like, that my Instagram's April O'Neil, and he's like, is it really? Because you should sell that shit for, like, $10,000. And I'm like, oh, my God, dude. So I'm totally doing it. Like I'm selling my Instagram domain because first of all, I'm tired of people trying to hack it. Like I get all, I get like, I think, I think like per month, I might see five to 10 emails where where Instagram is like, Hey, uh, you know, sorry, you couldn't reset your password or, um, Oh, I know. Uh, sorry, I get those your two. your password reset wasn't successful. And I'm like, I did not try to reset my password. I know. So, um, so I'm thinking I should sell it. So I'm reaching out to Nickelodeon USA, Nickelodeon UK. I'm reaching out to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, Nickelodeon owns the Ninja Turtles, I think, like, visually, like, on TV. 
And then the comics are owned by somebody else. So I'm reaching out to all of them to see if they want it. <laughs> um, but I did make a post on my Instagram, April O'Neil, uh, trying to sell it. So we'll see what happens. And maybe years from now where I sell it. Because I got it in 2010 because I thought Instagram was just going to, like, not be a thing. And it's totally a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a good it's tool a few, that I don't know how to use anyway. So... <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, no, you're, you're I not started really on a blog. There, huh? I started a blog and uh, just follow it, just read it if you think it's interesting. I mean, I'm sure you will do because I try to talk about uh, issues that bother me. Like for example, you know, what's the cash value of a promise? Can I sell that or, uh, you know, <laughs> okay. truth? Trust is like a windshield. If you break it one too many times, it's gonna shatter and. Right now, my trust looks like a broken windshield. You know, when the I think mine is too, and I try to hide it. <laughs> it's, I mean, stuff like that, you know. But I think it's a good place. I mean, and it lets me vent, and hopefully. What is it? Explain it. I don't know what this is. What oh, it's called, confessions as a, it's called Confessions of a Serial Dater. What's the address of your blog? A Serial Dater dot wordpress dot com okay and mine's instagram dot com slash april o'neill um but yeah you're i'll read your blog angie because like, like i thought it was just a facebook page but then i realized it was oh no blog, no i like, i have the facebook later. page but i attach it to the blog now okay so, i mean i haven't i had to start doing like some cross uh promotion because i use the pay i use the facebook page to you know, post memes and shit on dating, but now I really want to like uh, start writing. I mean, I think writing will make me a better comic if I decide to continue yeah. being a comic. But I mean, I need to, uh, you know, get writing, get writing more. Okay, yeah. So, you know, it's uh, I think it's a cool thing to do. It's uh nice, and I hope that you all read me. I have, pe I have people that read me from Ireland and from the United Kingdom. So shut up. That means I'm interested. That's shout that. out to them. That's great. Yeah. You're international. Yeah, I'm international. So, okay. So I think that's all for today. We have like 41 minutes right now. So. Oh, great. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, yeah that's all today. Um, I hope everyone has a great week. Yeah. And I hope I don't get sick. I know, sick. Angie, you feel better? No. I, I hope sleep. you feel better. Maybe a week. And maybe a month, but you, you'll feel better. The, the clouds will pass. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's okay, though. It's okay. I can only say that right now because I feel so good. Like, we'll see how I know. I mean, like, and the thing is, I feel so I'm good. trying it's so to feel to good that. about things, but it's just like also because my apartment is in disarray, I'm not feeling good. Yeah. Oh, I feel you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I yeah, feel this vanity and I was something. able to put all the makeup in my bedroom now. And I have a little mirror, but it's not working yet. So, we'll, we'll see what happens, okay? Uh, I hope to hear from you soon. I hope you guys have feedback for us. Send us dick pics or whatever, hate mail or comments. <laughs> send whatever. us anything. Like, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, we want to hear from you send guys. Send us anything. Send us anything it's at a, this point. Our email is please. What's the email address? Yeah. Please send dickpics at gmail.com. Yeah. So send us anything, like a news article that we send should talk about. Send me dogs. Oh, yeah. Like send us anything that you want us to cover. So Or you want us to promote your business? Send us like your business and we'll promote No, we it. don't promote businesses. <laughs> really? You don't want to? I don't know. Maybe, maybe we should if they pay us. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, I guess if you pay us, like a dollar or something. No, yeah, something like that. If you pay us enough to keep our SoundCloud up. Uh, true, like, yeah. It's okay, <laughs> so. Anyways, uh, I think that's all for today. Yeah, well, uh, thanks for listening, too. Please, Please send, send this. Dick dick. Dick. Ooh, wait a minute. I think I just sent these to my dad. Shut the fuck up. No, I'm serious. Oh, fuck, the situation just got bad. Oh, fuck, 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 I sailed 60 pictures to a sale. And he just texted me back. What the hell? I sent my dad pictures of 